Hey guys, I never, I don't think I ever did show you the uh, the plumbing work I ended up doing here. I think I have a video. In fact, I just uploaded it. I know it's uh, the video of the uh, the pot feeder repiping. This is obviously a few years later now, um, but I didn't get the rest of the piping in there. Not sure if I, I think this drain line was in there before. Not sure about that, but that's just for draining the closed loop or cleaning this strainer here, either or. Um, before it would just fill on the floor. There was nothing attached there before, so I put a union on there so it could be disconnected, but it just stays there unless otherwise needed. Uh, this boiler just got replaced by uh, someone else recently, uh, but the drain line is all something I did. Uh, and I guess they thought it was nice enough to leave it there too. They didn't change anything. Uh, so starting over here, you have the relief valve for the closed loop. This is set at about 30 psi, I think, because uh, that's you know suction pressure should never get above that. This is the makeup regulator, of course. You've got an incoming pr pressure gauge here. As you can see it's pretty high, about the psi or so. A bit of a corner there. Got an isolation valve just for that. Cut off the makeup, makeup loop, and you see where I cut back the original piping. This is the first, the only original elbow fitting left in here. So uh, went over here for uh, for the fast fill. This uh, the loop is completely drained. You open that up, and that puts one inch of city pressure in there. Um, it fills it that a lot faster than through the makeup regulator, obviously. And this is for the uh, float valve on the cooling tower, which I also installed the pressure regulator on. It's a real tight fit up to the, up to the concrete beam there. Then I also put a pressure gauge on that so you can keep an eye on the regulator there. A nice ball valve is good just for general purposes. A uh, water hammer rest here for that float valve. And this kind of uh, assembly of the engines here. Um, steel connection to the tower. I'm, I don't believe it's stainless, so I wanted to make sure I got my uh, six inches of brass in there. So uh, I could have done that with different fittings, but that's just what they had at the hardware store. Uh, so maybe a little on the wasteful side, but uh, again, it's all, this stuff's obviously been here for a few years now. Get this uh, little support bracket after the fact. It jiggle. I saw how much it uh, moved around. So. This hanger wasn't enough. So that's that, and then the uh, expansion tank plumbing, you know, that too. Uh, I see the uh, new makeup regulator station. So we got that. We got the incoming water. We got the regulator, 12 psi regulator or thereabouts. Um, relief valve set at 30. Uh, I got unions on on every side. Of everything here to. For serviceability, you can see. And that drain line goes over from the relief valve, ties into the boiler relief valve. Yeah, it's everywhere to uh, help the service guy out. And then that drops over to the floor drain. Again, this used to just drain on the floor before. The union right here, in case you need to roll something by with a part or whatever. Uh, this, this piece of strut needs to be replaced, the clamp. It, was, uh, it wasn't looking quite that bad when I hooked it up, but uh, it's getting pretty rough now. So. Um, anyways, so then out of the makeup regulator station, we got another service valve. So we can isolate this totally from both sides of the loop right here, right here. Pull from the incoming water and from the loop, rather. And then this uh, check valve to uh, prevent the uh, water coming back this way when the, uh, when, when the pump shuts off because uh, the head pressure in the building is higher than 30 PSI, so it'll come out of the relief valve if you don't have that check valve. Uh, and again, a union on there to make it easy to replace. Uh, we'll scrap the units right there, and that connects over to the expansion tank right here. Uh, it goes to the, the air control valve, uh, which is, again, it's a steel valve, so I, made, I put a six inch brass nipple on there uh, before connecting to the copper. We have got a union there, so if you need to replace the air control valve, that'll be easy. Uh, isolation valve there to uh, that will isolate the expansion tank. Um, and then over here is where it keys together with the fast fill. And then this is obviously the uh, connection to the suction side of the pump, to the uh, yeah, the suction side of the pump, the return. And again, a union there to make everything easy to replace.
unions on both sides of that. Again, uh, some people think that's a bit excessive, but I like having everything as, as maximum serviceability. If you have to replace that valve, I want it, I want it to be easy as possible. So, again, there's a good chance Especially in my situation, a lot of these times I'm a guy who's gonna, gonna be working on it later, so I always try to set it up that way. Uh, boilers valved off at the moment because we're in the middle of summer, we don't need it. This building barely needs it in the winter, actually, and we're in Southern California, so, you know. Uh, that's just the way it is. And uh, I showed you this uh, in the feeder pot video, that's how that's how this ended up looking. We got this a few years old, same expansion tank. I don't think I had this strap on here at that point. Uh, that was uh, that was a little bit of an upgrade I did. Uh, pretty massive U-bolt there. I forget what size that is, like a 12-inch U-bolt or something. I had to throw the strap out to get the, get it through there because the O-bolt holes aren't big enough, obviously. Um, so yeah, I think I had, I think I just had this valve bare uh, when I showed you the feeder pot video. Um, so I did stub a gauge out here, which uh, appears to be defective or something. It's failed recently. Put this cork tape on there to keep the vibration down. Um, yeah, bad water pressure gauge will replace that. Uh, we get some new ones for this pump too. Um, but anyway, so I I, uh, I moved the valve up from where it was, added this T in here so we could get, uh, so that way you could test this would serve as a as a as a pressure an accurate pressure test gauge for either side. A lot of times these gauges seem to get a little wonky, um, so I thought this was kind of a higher quality gauge, you know, a yellow jacket gauge. Could be wrong. Um, it might just be the same crappy one with a different. Anyways, so I thought that would be and, and it worked for a while. I don't know when this failed exactly. I don't I don't work every day at this facility anymore. So, um, but basically, I, it was it was so you you can open open one or the other of these valves and get. A, uh, a pressure, an accurate pressure reading on either, and then also this loop right here uh, was intended to be for the chemical treatment guy, so he can get a, he has a nice place to get a sample from there. He doesn't have to bend down and go to the drain valve there. You know, that's. Uh, I actually saw, I know for sure I saw the. Uh, this was the last guy. He's not the guy who does it anymore, but I saw him getting water out of there, and I'm like, hey man, you know, I was in here for something else. I said, hey, you know, I got. Yeah, and I, I want to put you a nice little sample for it up here, you know, I as well use it. So yeah, you see there was just some static pressure in there, but it's still holding at 10 even when it's, yeah, when it's empty, so. Yeah, maybe new pressure gauge for there. Anyway, so I just wanted to show you that, that, that funny that I did. Uh, it's it been, like I said, been a couple years ago now, and obviously all holding strong. Uh, slightly interesting note here, I just remembered. This is an inch and a quarter T, and that is a, I believe that's an inch, hmm, what is that? I think that's an inch and a half, yeah, that's an inch and a half by one inch reducer coupling. So that's meant to go over inch and a half pipe, but it just so happened that this brand of inch and a quarter T, it fit just like a piece of pipe over that. So I sanded the outside of the T and soldered it up there. Uh, a little, again, a little unconventional, but it works. Um, so yeah, had a little fun with that. Drain valve on the expansion tank, also replaced. Uh, just had a st stupid little garden valve on there before. I'm like, come on, man, how are you gonna get the chunks out with that? You need the, you need the full ball valve of the so. Anyways, uh, I just wanted to show you that stuff. The main reason I'm in here today is we're gonna be replacing this pump. And uh, yeah, it's not, they're not running it anymore, thank God. But uh, surface temperature is getting really hot. Ooh, I didn't even see that electrical box is sketchy. Um, I actually did a repair on this a while ago, and uh, this fitting was all messed up and stuff like that. But uh, someone's definitely come in here and kicked this or something like that. Uh, but no, no matter, we're gonna rebuild the whole pump anyways. So um, yeah, there's one of those. Uh, yeah, that's good. So I'm thinking these valves probably hold. Uh, I think. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer, anyways, for my partner to get here, and we're gonna uh, shut the building, shut the building down. So, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna do the do that on a separate video. I just wanted to show you the uh, show you what was where we're at up to this point, and uh, now we'll uh, move on to the uh, the pump replacement here. Thanks for watching.